Hey there, it's Joe Simons with Salt Strong. I'm here with the man, Captain Mark Johnson, a.k.a. Hollywood, Florida Keys Fun Fishing. Dude, we uh, we talked about anchoring. You know, a lot of us, we've, we've done some anchoring in the shallow water. We've used the anchor pins and stuff. We're like, all right, we need to do a video on anchoring a little bit deeper water. And you know what? We were just praying for like a really windy day so we could show the worst conditions, and we got it. So we're here with some obstacles, uh, but we're going to talk about anchors the different types and we're actually get it get uh get here and throw them in and show them how to set it and everything right yes sir okay so we'll get right to it so in the small boat world anchoring the two most common types of anchor is what you see here is what they known as a danforth anchor okay it has flukes and shank and chain and then my personal favorite here is also known as a claw or a snow plow anchor okay and this one is set up with what we call a reef trip which is what we have here with the zip ties and we'll talk about that in a second but you can look right off the bat that you can see these anchors are completely different and the reason being is sometimes this anchor works really good on hard bottom but it doesn't work so good on a grassy bottom you find that if you're out in the Gulf of Mexico where we mackerel fish and stuff a lot and it's windy this anchor will happen to get clogged up with grass all in here and it will slide and you can't stay tight to the bottom. Whereas the claw anchor snow plow, when that digs in, buddy, you're on, you're on the hook, you're not moving. So for me personally, this is what we fish with day in, day out. But if you stay in a hard bottom scenario or fishing where you can get this to hang on the bottom around the bridges and stuff, these anchors work fine. Uh, they're also, they can bend sometimes when you get them hung up. So that can be an advantage to get him out of the bottom when you get stuck. Uh, talk about a reef trip so when you hang an anchor up on the bottom and you're in deep water you can't just go down and get it so all of a sudden you can't pull it up so if you look at what I have set up here you'll notice that I have a hole here with a buckle okay and then you have your chain runs down to the end of your shank and then that is zip tied right here so the zip ties are enough to hold the boat on this anchor tight and then if by, uh, by some bad luck day this gets hung up in a rock or I can't pull it, you tighten up the anchor rope to your boat, you bump your boat in gear with enough force to break the zip tie, which then turns around and lets the chain pull the anchor from the back, which then pulls it out of the snag. Versus when you pull from the front, all you're doing is putting that in the rock even worse. So this anchor here is showed without a reef trip, which most people do, and that's why diving anchors in the Keys is a full-time sport, because you find these anchors up and down the reef, hung in the rock where you can't get them out without having a reef trip set up. So, all right, so that right now we're gonna go ahead and deploy an anchor and show you guys how we would easy anchor over the side, how we get set up and how we tie it off to make sure that you don't catch a rope around the foot or have some things that commonly go wrong with folks that are new at anchoring. Hey, so one, one more thing, let's, uh, let's talk about the importance of the chain, you know, why ah, someone... Yes, good call. The most important element of this whole thing is the chain. If you took this rope and you tied it right to the anchor direct, okay, that's about as most ineffective anchoring as you can do. And the reason being the chain is the weight of the chain and the length of the chain keeps the plane angle of your line from the front of your boat on an even with the almost parallel to the bottom, which allows your anchor to dig in. If you take the chain away and your rope goes right to the end of the shank, then all of a sudden your angle from the top of your boat to the anchor is much more right side up and it will pull the anchor out of the bottom and make it very hard for you to stay connected. So that's a big, a big uh, missing link on a lot of recreational boaters. They just tie a rope to your anchor and they just throw it in and they don't know why it doesn't grab. The other part of that equation is you have to have what we call scope. All right, if it's 10 feet deep, you can't get away with 10 feet of anchor rope. Basic rule of thumb is you want at least three feet of line for every foot of depth on a nice flat calm day. If it gets a little windy or you have a lot of current, then you want to up that scope to about five feet of line for every foot of depth. So think about that. You're in 50 feet of water. You're gonna need at least 150 feet of rope, if not 250 feet of rope to successfully anchor your bottom 
and keep you, your boat in a safe anchoring position. If you anchor your boat with a short rope and you don't have any give when it's rough out there, you can take a wave over the front of your boat and you can fill your boat full of water, which we all know is not a good thing. <laughs> so make sure you have the right kind of scope on your rope when you want to deploy your anchor in the deep water. Scope on the rope. Scope on the rope. Okay. So let's take my favorite anchor here, which is the plow. Let's and talk we'll, about the talk about the weight of this too. Uh, is compare, it heavy? Well, compared to that, it's I mean it's night and day, right? It is. It is. So me personally, these are what we anchor our bay boats with, and this is 16 and a half pound anchor. And this anchor size is probably good for a boat up to 30 feet long. Okay, so that's good for us. I'd rather have a little too much anchor than not enough. This other small anchor here is only eight pounds and it says it's good to up to 24 feet. Okay, so it's very easy to have too small of an anchor, okay, which gets you nowhere. Or you could have overkill anchor, which again, big anchor, small boats, now you're struggling to have a place to put them. So make sure whatever anchor you decide to purchase for your boat that it matches the size boat you're using it and then buy an anchor that you're gonna use for the majority of the fishing you do and what kind of bottom you're on. And again, if you're on the reef, especially our delicate coral reef here in the Keys, make sure that you set your anchor up with what we call a reef trip. It can be done with zip ties, it can be done with fishing line, but you even rig and wire, you just need to make sure you have some way to break this free here and pull an anchor from the back if you get it hung up in the rock. All right, so right now we're gonna set this anchor out here. We're in about 10 feet of water on the ocean side of Alamorada. We got about 15 to 20 knots of wind out of the north, and this anchor is gonna work like a charm. So a big mistake people do, two things. One, they pull all their rope out of the hatch, and then they'll have it where it's almost upside down, so your rope is pulling from the bottom of the pile, which can create a tangle. So if you have short rope, like a lot of us use in the inshore, fishing, you want to make sure that you have it to where the rope is pulling from the top before you deploy it. So take a minute and set your anchor and get things ready before you deploy your anchor. You'll see how I coil this up here and I put it on the top. Okay? Now, another problem that people like to do is throw the anchor. Anchors are heavy. Gel coat on your boat's expensive. If you drop this or throw it and it hits your boat, you can damage your boat in a big way. So anchors are never really designed to be thrown over. We like to ease them over the side. So you have your anchor, you have your chain, you're keeping the rope away from your feet. You get on whatever side you want. You go hand over hand, away from the gun on the rub rail, and let your rope out. Here, you can get yourself in trouble if you get wrapped around the foot or if this turns into a big knot and you're trying to untangle it while your boat's gonna come under pressure, you can get your hands caught in it, you can have a lot of things go wrong. So you can't stress enough the importance of having your feet out of the way and your rope in a nice, neat coil and not in a big, giant rat's nest. So once you get to here, you can let your line out, you get to your cleat. You can see here, you make a nice figure eight, okay? You always finish it with a lock. All right, and then just like that here, this anchor is going to come tight. And you know when your boat gets anchored because as soon as it comes tight, the nose of your boat is always going to spin up into the wind. So if you drop the anchor and you somehow notice that, see the boat spinning right now, just that easy. If you're drifting, your nose can be at some really off angle. That's a telltale sign that you're sliding on the anchor. And it does happen, you can come loose, you can have a rope come undone, you can have somehow your chain and shackle pins can come apart, things go wrong. But as long as you know, and you feel the nose of your boat is up into the wind, that's how you know you're tight on the anchor. So now it's time to go, so we're gonna pull our anchor. Big mistake people do, again, not paying attention to your rope, not letting the boat help you. So you have somebody that drives, and you can idle right up your anchor rope, makes life really easy. A simple hand signal can tell your driver that you're straight up and down on your rope, okay? And if your anchor doesn't come loose on its own, you can take a wrap around the cleat and gently use the boat to break it free, and then you can pull it by hand. 
So people get themselves in trouble, they hurt their back, they slip and fall, they get tangled in the rope. We try to eliminate all of that by letting the boat help you pull the anchor. Simple hand signals that are universal in the industry and just once again paying attention to what you're doing so that nobody gets hurt. So I'm going to have Joe put the boat in gear. I'm going to give him a good point with my hand which way the anchor is. I'm going to untie my rope and now it's very easy hand over hand making a nice pile in front of my feet as we get closer to the anchor. As we get straight up and down I give him a fist hand signal tells him we're good to stop and now we're straight up and down. So now that I'm here, you bend your knees, your whole body is involved in the anchor pull. So if you're lucky, it pops, then you can pull. And once you get to your chain, you can be very careful on the gunnel. It's hand over hand of the chain, grab your anchor, and you go out and over the gunnel. Again, if you drop this on your boat, it's expensive fiberglass repair. And that is a safe, effective way to pull your anchor. So for our filming purposes today, everybody, we're only going to deploy the one anchor, but the premise to use this anchor is the same. Remember, it's hand over hand when you put it out. Tie your rope off to your cleat. When your boat comes tight, you'll know it'll go up into the wind. And then when you pull it, same thing. Let somebody drive and help you. Universal hand signals, get your anchor up and in the boat. And then uh, when we, before we go, we always secure this stuff because again, this stuff can really do damage to the deck of your boat. All right, that's going to cover how we anchor boats in the shallow water. Again, if you have any questions on the type of anchors, how to set up your scope or chain, feel free to look us up on Salt Strong, and you can always find us on FloridaKeysFunFishing.com.